next question? <laughs> What is the most important life lesson you have learned on your journey, and how did it affect you? I, I didn't even hear that. All right, so she said, what's, can you give us a life lesson you learned, on your, how has it affected your journey? Something, a life lesson you can impart to us. Um, well, the music business is rough. There's a bunch of assholes and idiots. <laughs> about that that uh, haven't yet been made public. There's these like, stories about Bangladesh concert. Yeah, concert from Bangladesh. Uh, well, one of my favorite things about it is uh, it was the first time Bob Dylan had played since he had that micro motorcycle wreck. And in between the shows, we were sitting back in the dressing room, he said to me, do you think the second audience is going to be like the first one? <laughs> And I said, well, Bob, uh, there's going to be 20,000 of them. There's uh, probably be some similarities with them. The thing about it is, he was sitting there, he taught me so much. You know, I, it's a big dressing room in the Madison Square Garden. It's made for teams, like hockey and that stuff. And all the rest of the cast was way over in the corner. They wouldn't come over where we were. And he was sitting there, and I'd say, Bob, Play It's All Over Now, Baby Blue, and he'd play that. And I'd say, play Boots of Spanish Weather, and he'd play that. He played songs for me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go, yeah. Maybe we can pass the mic down the road, if you guys don't mind. Right there in the uh, center. I mean, I've loved you ever since before Mad Dog was an Englishman. And my question is, are there, what songs hold a sentimental value to you? I mean, you've been done a lot, but are there any that really stand out that you care about more than others? On that album? No, I or on anything, talking. Leon, anything you've done that you really feel special about. Well, some of my favorite songs, not necessarily something I've done. Uh, Sam Cooke had a version of Summertime on the back of You Send Me, which I broke my record player playing. So it's still playing with the version of Summertime. I don't know why I never but I've got it with Sam Cooke. Did you say that you saw the documentary, The Wrecking Group? No, I read the book. Oh, you read the book. Ken Hartman wrote the book, Wrecking Crew, and Leon has mentioned it many, many times. All the different artists that you played for. I guess I'm looking for a story, too, about your Wrecking Crew days. Yeah, Leon, we were talking about that earlier, right? Anything about The Wrecking Crew you care to share with us? Any memories? Any memories of The Wrecking Crew? Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I was I was happy to have a job, <laughs> but uh, Jack Nietzsche. I started. Jack and Shannon introduced me to Jack Nietzsche, and I started playing all of his records. And he was arranging for Phil Spector. And I went in the session. Phil Spector came up to me and said, "Play dumb, play dumb." He didn't have much of a high opinion of the audience. He, he fortunately never shot me. <laughs> is that Leah is the only person 
person that I knew that ever that ever told Phil Spector to go fuck himself. <laughs> gotten up on the, on the piano. Now you have to understand that it's Phil Spector days that, that they would go on for so long and, and he would take the musicians to the point of like near insanity. So that like, you know, at one point you, you just, you know, you would, some guys just dealt with it and, and, and beat up their wives when they got home. But in, in Leon's case, <clears throat> he just Got up and said, flatness. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's my foot. <laughs> well, when you see the film, Cher tells that story. Oh, that's right. She tells the whole story, and that's actually one of the absolute true things about that. <laughs> I don't and, want to monopolize this corner. Anybody over there, maybe, will get one?